welcome to the grand celebration honoring he who I most loyally serve, the Honorable Michael J. Panellides, Mayor of Annapolis, Maryland. And I bid ye welcome to the Duke of West Street, the Prince of Bay Ridge, Dean De Camera. Thank you very much, Squire. Uh, welcome, uh, and thank you very much for joining in our support of our mayor, Mike Panlias. At this time, I'd like to ask our delegate from our district, Herb McMillan, to step forward. We have a young candidate who's been on the job for four years. He's gotten a lot of things accomplished. You know, a lot of people think you have to have the votes on the city council to get something done when you're the mayor, but you know, there are a lot of ways to skin that cat, and I think you found just about every single one of them, Mike. Why does somebody want to be a mayor? Why does somebody want to be involved? Mike's family moved to this town 80 years ago. In fact, they're celebrating their 80th anniversary this year in the early 70s they moved here. They've been a part of the moral fiber of this town, and I really say moral fiber, because that's what it takes to run a city. You need the right moral fiber, you need the right intellect, you need the right people around you. And they've always surrounded themselves with the right people. And our mayor is surrounding himself with the right people. And you can see tonight, the crowds have come out and are supportive. This is a great turnout. It's so impressive to see you all here tonight. I support him because he's brought back Annapolis back to his basics. He's brought us back to what we have learned in the past and what we've seen with the good mayors and the good politicians around here. It's a tough fight for him. Why in God's name would anyone want to be a mayor when you have 15 factions at all times to deal with in the city? Whether it's the downtown business people or the historic people or the residents downtown or the watermen or the sailboaters or the power boaters or the naval academy or the federal government or the state government Need I go on? How do you satisfy everybody? You can't do it. When Mike started as mayor well over three years ago, he was a novice. And I hope some of you were there for his first speeches and his first comments. But I hope you're really around for his recent ones. In three years, he has developed this city and he has developed himself into be a phenomenal, a phenomenal mayor. He's <laughs> He has his pulse, his finger on the pulse of everything that's going on. And he has his fingers and his tentacles out everywhere to find out what's happening. Whether it's you sending him an email or a text or something important along the line, he follows up with it very quickly. What he's done with the budget in the city of Annapolis, what he's done getting jobs done quicker, what he's done by working with the fire and the police department, they're all important. And that's what makes our city one of the best. You know, who wouldn't want to be mayor of one of the finest small cities in this country, one of the most important cities in this country. I mean, our roots go back so far. I mean, where the Continental Congress was here in 1783, where the, where the beginning of the foundation of this country started right here in Annapolis. But I looked and said, what do they all have in common? And then why would Mike want to follow in their footsteps? And then I realized, you got Amos Garrett Boulevard. You got the Hillman Garage. <laughs> You've got the Moyer Recreational Center. <laughs> Mike wants something named after him. <laughs> but we need to name something great after him that will be here forever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our mayor and our next mayor in the city of Annapolis. Terrific introduction. Let's have a big round of applause for the sponsors and volunteers who made tonight possible. You know, we don't coordinate speeches and what we're going to say beforehand, so I didn't know you were going to say that. And honestly, I think the next thing up is a sewer treatment plant. So. <laughs> For a little while. <laughs> but um, I appreciate you all being here. I mean, look at this crowd, the overwhelming support we have. I just can't tell you how much it means to me on a personal level. 
And these past four years have been incredible. I was looking at this slideshow as I was walking around talking with people, and it brought back a lot of good memories from the first days to where we are now. For those of you who remember at the beginning, it didn't start off easy. When I took office, the city of Annapolis was on an unsustainable path. We were treating taxpayers like an ATM. The city had two rounds of massive tax increases. We had to borrow $10 million just to meet the payroll and our basic obligations. We had a $7.5 million deficit day one when I took office. Things needed to change. So here's what we did to put the city on the right path. We passed three budgets without raising the property tax rate in the city of Annapolis. We lowered the solid waste fee by over 30%. For public safety, we invested $1.25 million in addition to follow through on my pledge to make Annapolis a safer city. In this upcoming budget, you'll see that I've hired two, 10 new additional officers to keep that going forward. We all knew about the history. Sam was talking about the history earlier, the housing authority of the city of Annapolis. And that was one of the things I saw as mayor, we had to change. I said, the old way was, you know what? This isn't really Annapolis, it's not our problem, let somebody else worry about it. But I said, every person that lives in those housing, they're Annapolitans just like you and I. So we went in there, and I was the first mayor to go to D.C. and demand that they do something different. I fired people off the board, I put in four brand new commissioners that are turning the ship around. Because at the end of the day, we don't rise unless everyone rises together. We have to make sure... <laughs> I went door to door, I have to say, I was a little scared. People told me not to do it. Because the rumors were, they're going to throw you out. Those of you who look outside the window will look at the bulkhead. We rebuilt that, not only on schedule, but a million dollars under budget. We're looking forward to what we're going to do on Main Street. It's set to be rebricked in 2018. I could go on and on, but one thing is clear. We're moving in the right direction. Land use and development are always major issues in the city. Does anyone remember the proposed massive development for the old Fawcett's building that would have changed the character of our city forever? There is no massive development down on City Docks because I was against it in my last campaign. And the day after I took office, the out-of-town developers left town. Anyone heard of Crystal Spring? No, never heard of that. Elections have consequences. I was talking to somebody the other day about it. If I was not elected, that massive development would have been approved and under construction. They would be out there right now cutting down the trees. I pledge to stop that massive development, and that's what we did. As of last month, if you've read in the Capitol, the out-of-town developers left with their plans. That original plan they submitted will never be built in the city of Annapolis. <laughs> Put in perspective, for those of you who don't remember, they were talking about putting commercial development the size of the Annapolis Town Center. More townhouses than you could count, a senior living facility, an inn, a West Marine, it went on and on and on. That plan's all gone away. Now, people are concerned about what comes next. And no one more than me. I live down at the end of Forest Drive and actually right next to that property. And I'll pledge to you one thing. As long as I'm mayor, I will always fight by your side. Together, we've accomplished incredible things, but this election is not about the past, it's about the future. And I want to talk to you tonight about how we're going to build on that progress. Public safety has always been my number one priority. We've had historic and unprecedented events funding in our public safety initiatives. But we're taking in a new direction. We're moving more towards community policing to build trust within the community. We're also having a much more aggressive approach on the heroin epidemic that is plaguing this country. I'm proud to say that I've been working alongside County Executive Steve Shue, who appointed me to his heroin task force, and Governor Larry Hogan, who's allocated state, high, uh, state officers to work in the city and has doubled our safe streets funding to help keep our city safe. We have new and innovative initiatives. We have to think outside of the box and do things differently. And one of the things I'm very proud of is the Annapolis Renewable Energy Park. And for those of you who don't know, kind of a change in philosophy of how we do things in the city. We had an old closed landfill that was costing the city money. So what did we do? We did what a lot of other cities did. We said, we're going to make this a money maker for the city. So right now we signed a lease. They're going to put up 50,000 
solar panels on a closed landfill. It's going to create green jobs. It's going to make the city $5 million over the next 20 years. We're going to continue to address flooding downtown. We were fortunate enough to get a million dollars from Governor Larry Hogan last year to help us design flood mitigation. It's a top priority in our administration. Much of the last election was about land use and traffic. And this one won't be any different. I've stopped some of the worst projects that, have, could, have, that could have come to the city over the past few years. But I have to be honest, I'm not happy with the current land use policies and practices that the city has. And we're going to rise and change things, change the way things are done. But as I said earlier, this election is not about the past, it's about the future. When I first ran for office, all I heard was about the things the city can't do, all the negative things going on in the city. There was a negative tone, and I want the overarching theme of this campaign to be about what's right with Annapolis, the things I've done to take us in a new direction and make things positive. This is a beautiful place full of hopes and dreams. As Sam said, my family's lived here for generations. You know, my parents had a, grandparents had a restaurant on Westry, uncles had a jewelry store. I've seen the town change. Some for better, some for worse. But this is where I live. It's where I want to grow up. It's where I want to raise my family. So I'm invested in making the city better. There's so much more to do. And I have to say, one of the best things I've done as mayor is my open door session. The first Tuesday of every month, anyone can come in and talk to me for 10 minutes about whatever they want. And that's honestly where I've got a lot of my ideas from about how to change the city and move us forward. But to be honest, I can't go another four years and take the city in this direction without your help. They mentioned earlier there's a lot of partisan forces trying to pull us apart. Put in perspective about how I govern the city, there's 157 cities in Maryland. Only four of them have partisan elections, Democrat or Republican. I believe I'm the mayor of all of Annapolis. We happen to be one of those four with partisan elections. There's a lot of outside money and a lot of outside forces that are going to make this one of the most negative campaigns that's ever existed in the city of Annapolis. So I need your help. I need you to call your friends. Put up a sign, put on a bumper sticker, send an email, host a meeting greet. Because without your help, we won't be able to keep moving forward. You know, I was thinking about this, about somebody said, why are you running for office again? You know, what have you accomplished? And I said, I'm running because I want to build on the things I've already done. This job is a blessing. It's been an honor to serve, and I wake up every single day. I thank God for the opportunity I have to make a positive difference in people's lives. So thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate everyone's help. And let's have a party. Woo!